What's up, everybody? Sean Emery, co-founder of Avery and Company, uh, an investment firm here in Miami, Florida, investing where the world is headed. Now, earnings season is upon us, so we're going to start kicking these, you know, conversations back into gear. You know, we just kicked off with Alphabet. We we just kicked off with Tesla. This one will be more focused around Tesla. I think, you know, it's if you're a company or an investment firm focusing on where the world is headed, clearly. You know, electric vehicles is one aspect to it. And then taking that electric vehicle and stage two is, you know, uh, throwing those computing resources into some form of uh, autonomous vehicles. And whether that is, you know, autonomous for the sake of, you know, single owner, single autonomy, you know, it kind of supports your driving or it's full self and with zero intervention from a driver. Uh, very similar to what we're seeing uh, with Waymo today in Phoenix and San Francisco and some other cities uh, that are on the horizon. Now, stepping back, you know, I just came off a call for, with Bloomberg uh, where, you know, they asked me a bunch of questions around Tesla specifically. And, you know, the first question was, you know, is Tesla a good investment? And the, the simple answer to that is, you know, if you think Tesla's full self-driving capabilities and they're... Uh, ability to essentially take that and scale it and become a dominant player, then Tesla is clearly an interesting opportunity. Now, the probability of those outcomes, I think, you know, are a little bit unknown today or a lot of well unknown today. We know exactly how many miles driven. We know, you know, the capabilities of their, their FSD uh, current um, uh, update and, and the function of that. And, you know, I'm a Tesla owner myself. I've used it, you know, some others have as well. And, you know, you compare that to someone like Waymo, if you've ever driven in a Waymo, and it's clear to me as someone that wants my vehicle that I, that I have that will drive myself, that Waymo's technology, at least for now, uh, is superior. Now, they, the technologies are, are, are different. You know, Tesla has taken much more of a camera-based approach uh, and trying to use vision as more of the, the, the input to then uh, reinforce the, the training of kind of their models. While someone like Waymo has used LiDAR, which is essentially is really around light, sending light signals out to understand objects that are you know, in the distance while also using camera technology. You know, we've spoken to the CEO last week uh, for a company called Aurora, which is doing this on the commercial space for full autonomy. That's going to actually be ready here. And they're already doing, you know, pilot routes in, in Texas, you know, going hundreds of miles uh, using uh, uh, um, large kind of 18 wheelers for shipping cargo. Uh, and, you know, their, their goal or their view is that the eventual winner in full self-driving or the best use of technology will likely be camera technology, but we're not even close to there yet. And that's essentially the words of, the, you know, the, the CEO of this, this company and that today fusion of LIDAR uh, camera sensory uh, is the optimal solution as of right now and today, but eventually it's cameras, which are very similar, you know, in theory to the human eye, is ultimately what will reign supreme, assuming these models can can actually catch up. In addition, you know, there's this whole big belief that uh, these miles driven are are hyper important, which they are to some degree. But again, speaking, you know, with people in the industry, specifically the CEO of Aurora, was that simulation um, is actually a way of of training your models because you know, from their point of view, is that a lot of this accumulated data that is being accumulated is wasting a lot of resources, money uh, for the sake of essentially just reviewing 90% of the outcomes that are, are highly predictable, where it's really that 10%, those kind of ends, those tails of distribution of like probability while you're driving a car that ultimately it, you need to figure out. And that's where, you know, simulation, obviously cameras can, can assist there as well. But the question is, is are you over, you know, um, uh, ingesting information for the sake of ingesting, as opposed to, uh, you know, being, you know, strategic and smart about it. Um, so Aurora is live and, and, you know, they're doing their thing. Waymo's doing their thing. Tesla hasn't, you know, gone there yet. So again, question number one was really around, do you think it's a good investment? And I think 
in order for it to be a good investment, specifically at these values, um, you have to believe full self-driving. And even Elon Musk himself in the earnings call kind of ended that with, with saying that if you don't believe in you know us as full self-driving, then then you know obviously we think um, we may not be a good investment. So the second question, you know, number two is really thinking around, um, you know, what would it take for Tesla to be supreme in this space? So if you, if you, if you just step back and you think of, and, and this is me kind of, you know, thinking out loud where, you know, what's the opportunity with full self-driving? So we know, you know, how many cars are on the road. Um, we also know, you know, how many humans are out there um, that would potentially, you know, drive around. Um, so, you know, taking some of those numbers, you know, there's roughly, a, you know, almost 170, $200 million or 200 million cars on the road of which, you know, a good portion of those are trucks, a lot of those for commercial use. So there's roughly call it 50 to, you know, 80 million cars that are much more um, commuter based you know, small sedans and, and such. Uh, and you could assume that a good portion of those would, you know, prefer an autonomous vehicle that picks them up and takes them from point A to point B. Then there's the trucks that are out there um, that exist. And these trucks, you know, in some cases can be a plumber, it can be a, you know, uh, somebody that is fixing your kitchen. Um, and they have their tools with them. They have a lot of stuff that in theory, you're probably not gonna put inside of an autonomous vehicle. And um, for one, you're not gonna switch it. So, you know, you're gonna be using it primarily throughout the whole entire day, working day, uh, sunlight. And maybe at night you would, in theory, I guess, put this onto a, to a um, kind of autonomous network uh, fleet that then could, you know, ride at night. So, but let's, you know, take it back to, the actual potential use case of this stuff. So if you have like 80 million cars, plus an additional, maybe some of those trucks, um, you maybe have like a hundred million cars or such that in theory is the opportunity set of somebody where, whether Tesla owns the vehicle or someone else uh, owns the fleet, whether it's, you know, commercial fleet operators and or individuals. Now that's step one is how many vehicles out there, which is ultimately trying to size up this, this market. Number two is really around, um, the cost of this vehicle. So you take, you know, what we've known where people have talked about a $25,000 car. Um, you know, some of these things won't require the bells and whistles. Cause again, you would in theory be getting in a back seat, kind of lounging. You don't need the best car in the world. Interior wise, um, you need a screen safety and, and uh, some space, really. And, you know, you take a $20,000 car, which is, you know, sounds about right, specifically when you look at some of the electric vehicles in China. Um, and, you know, what is that size up to? That size up to, you know, roughly, I think, uh, back of the envelope math, maybe $2 trillion. Um, so you have 100 million cars, 2 trillion. Now, there's other nuances that I think matter, where, you know, you take a city, and I was looking at this data earlier, earlier where you take a city like New York, where I think there's 8.8, 9 million people in the city and there's 2 million cars, 2 million cars, 8, 9 million people, uh, everyone else commutes. And, you know, in theory, this would be replacing some of those vehicles plus some of the taxi use. There's roughly 13,000 taxis in New York. Um, those are the, the medallions. Then you have uh, the 2 million cars. So in these big, large cities, you know, again, I'm not sure um, you're going to expand that market because, in, you know, transportation is, is, you know, some of the public transportation plus some of the walking advantages that some of these cities have. Um, as cities get bigger and bigger, the question is, is, you know, does autonomous flow through those cities? So again, these are other, you know, uh, when you're trying to size a market, you're starting to cut it down and trying to figure out uh, the size of it. So again, $2 trillion for, let's say, the vehicles that I suggested before, $20,000, you know, 100 million vehicles. That's ultimately some of the revenue. But again, that's all, you know, if, if gross margins for uh, Tesla's business uh, is, you know, 10%, let's say, with a, a vehicle at that price, um, 
you know, what is ultimately, if you captured that entire market, what are these things worth? Now there's the Uber networks that exist out there. And, you know, when you think about Uber as a business, you know, they're, they're global market share. And, you know, you're talking about a business that is, you know, somewhere between 60 and $100 billion value. Um, and so, you know, that's somewhat incremental to what you would say $2 trillion. Now, is Tesla going to capture $2 trillion? If they're just capturing $2 trillion at gross margin dollars um, or a little bit above gross margin dollars, what do you value that, that business at relative to where it is today? You know, it's hovered around a trillion dollars, you know, from here or there over the last year. Um, you know, it makes you think, again, this was, you know, an open discussion around that topic. And I've seen various stuff out there. We'll probably have a piece out there trying to size up the market, which we, you know, we're working on, which is where some of these numbers come from. Um, but again, this is me thinking openly about it. Now, the what happens if Tesla isn't necessarily uh, successful in kind of a broad rollout? And, the, you know, they only capture, you know, sub portions of, of the ecosystem as it relates to solely uh, full self-driving you know, you essentially have this car company that, you know, a lot of time, like two, a year and a half, two years ago when, you know, they were, you know, those plus 20, you know, 2%, 25% uh, gross margins, you know, people were further illustrating how they were out earning the rest of the industry. Therefore, you know, they're, they're not a car company. And what we've seen is, you know, average selling price in this last quarter come down 7%. So prices have come down, yet they haven't really spurred demand for, for electric vehicles. Well, at the same time, maybe not like for like in electric vehicles, but hybrid vehicles have actually been, you know, performing really, really well and actually growing. So in the whole aggregate, you know, they're, they're, they've been losing share. They've been holding share in, in electric vehicles. If we allow electric vehicles from international, specifically China, to come into the market, you know, that's another uh, uh, issue. Um, you know, a lot of that will be political, uh, some of it not. Um, and, you know, that'll further pressure gross margins, number one. That'll further pressure, you know, the opportunity set in terms of uh, supply, demand, supply of vehicles, demand of these vehicles. Uh, and then, uh, you know, an overarching question that I don't think was even, you know, brought up was, you know, is hybrid a, a decent approach for, for what's going on um, out there, because for one, you know, Musk has you know uh, articulated that that um, you know he believes that actually you know the energy. This is in some of his uh, tweets uh, that the requirement for you know oil and gas and natural gas and and gas in general and and drilling uh, is still required and will be required for a long time. Yet at the same time, you know, uh, saying electric vehicles is the future and, and kind of discrediting the whole hybrid approach. Um, so, again, these are a lot of things to think about. You know, the quarter itself, again, it wasn't a good quarter on the top line, the bottom line. A lot of uh, promises. They make amazing vehicles. Again, you know, I, I have one of the vehicles and uh, I really love it. And I would hope it can drive me from a valuation, from an investor standpoint. I think that's how you have to think. You know, I think sizing up this this full self driving, and what ultimately that does to you know margins, and also you know what kind of market share capture would they capture, and if so, how much value would that actually accrue? You know, on the call he said five trillion. You know, there's another firm out there throwing like ten trillion dollars out. Um, if we have full self, if we have autonomous vehicle, and then there's Waymo, right? There's Waymo out there, but if you have autonomous vehicles. You know, I, I think it's probably going to be pretty regional slash, uh, um, you know, country by country. We're clearly already at the, the, you know, the early stages of having cameras on vehicles. Places in like Asia don't allow you to drive by certain areas. Um, so anyways, I'm going to end there. Um, I believe, you know, Tesla is a great company. You know, uh, Musk is 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 clearly a, an inspiring leader from the standpoint of his product and vision of what he wants to build as a business. Um, but at the same time, thinking prudently about you know their vehicle, their car company today, the future is definitely really around self driving, full self driving. The Waymo experience is is the future. If you haven't experienced it, make sure you do. 
Um, and that'll give you a sense of like where everything could go. Now, the question of whether people want to own the fleet or they have to commercialize the fleet themselves or have commercial operators owning Tesla vehicles to then, you know, do that. Uh, a lot of questions out there. And I think that's some of the reaction you're seeing in the, in, in the shares. Um, so with that, you know, I'll cover Alphabet uh, in a moment on my next, um, you know, session. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, the Alpha, Alphabet business. But with that, see you next time.